So let's solve part B of this question. Now, there are two ways of solving part B. We can either use the work energy theorems or we can use the work equation. Let's start off by using the work equation. So we know that the work equation is a force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle in between the force and the displacement. So let's identify all parts of this, shall we? The key part of the question here is we want the work done by gravity. So we're going to focus our attention on this force, the force of gravity right here. So work done by gravity is equal to mg because the force of gravity is ma the mass times gravity multiplied by the displacement times an angle. But what angle is it going to be? If we rotate our diagram for a moment, like we did with the applied force, we'll see that gravity points this away, and our displacement is right here. We have two meters. But take a look at this for a moment. Our displacement is going in this direction. Keep in mind this is not a force. I'm just drawing the direction of it for clarity. And if we decided to connect these, the force vector and the displacement vector, we can easily see what angle it forms. 180 degrees. So the, our cosine angle is 180. And if we continue solving this right here, mg is 140 times 10 meters per second squared multiplied by the displacement of 2 meters. And cosine of 180 is negative 1. So our answer is negative 2,800 joules. And this makes sense because gravity is opposing, it's trying to bring the system back down. So it's doing negative work in this case. It's quote unquote losing the battle if you want to think of it like that, if you want to. Yes. So that's the first part of solving this question right here. Now we can also use the work energy theorems. And I find this one to be a little bit easier. If you recall, we had the work, we had the net work, which is equal to delta ke. We also have work done by our non-conservative forces which is delta E, and we have this last one right here. Work done by, excuse me, it should be work done by our conservative forces. And this is negative delta PE. So if we focus our attention on this work energy theorem, we'll see that Solving this question is not too difficult anymore because the change in potential and since our for the cons the only conservative force that we have in this system is gravity and the question is how much work is being done by gravity so this is a optimal uh, equation that we should use in this situation. Now if we go ahead and write everything out and we'll put the negative out front, I'm going to bracket everything to isolate the negative 
sign from everything else. And we have our MGH final minus our MGH initial. Now, if we take a look at this expression right here, we realize that we can cancel this whole thing out into zero because the initial height starts at ground level right here. And if it's at ground level, our height is at zero. We define it to be zero meters. As for the final height, it'll be two meters because that's where the mechanic lifts it up two meters off the ground. So if we continue on with the equation, we have our negative MGH final. And if we plug in all of our values, we have a negative 140 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared for gravity, and our final height of 2 meters. This results in an answer of negative 2,800 joules. I hope that helps, and I hope that clarifies the ways of solving these types of questions using work. Now, there are other installments I plan on showing on how to solve questions involving work energy theorems and the work equation. And there are some where you have to actually combine both. But in this situation, you can clearly see how having a mastery of both allows you to easily solve questions like these. These are good intro questions, and they can only get harder from here. I hope this helps. Thank you.